Hello, this is Klaus Jensen presenting yet another game in which I played the Galaga variation as Black uh, against the King's Engine. This game was uh, much tougher for me than the first game which was analyzed in my video titled Galaga Variation. And I'm of course playing Black again and uh, the opening moves went uh, C4, Knight F6, G3, G6, Bishop G2, Bishop G7, Knight C3, Castles, D4, D6, Knight f3, knight bd7, castles, e5, e4, e takes d4, knight takes d4, rook e8, h3. And we have this uh, fianchetto variation of the king's engine once again. And it's not easy for black to attack kingside. So this is why um, the idea of the Gallagher variation is to create play on the queen side instead. And the first step is to play for the b5 break. So a6 bishop e3, rook b8, b3, queen e7. And in my first Gallagher variation video, my opponent played queen c2 in this position. And then followed the Gallagher idea, c5 kicking the knight on d4, knight d to e2, b5, knight f4, bishop b7, rook a to e1, knight e5, knight c takes d5, and then I was happy to exchange some pieces on d5 because this was uh, closing down the d-file and eliminating my problem with the weak d6 pawn and just giving me a nice pawn majority on the queen side, my three green pawns against uh, two yellow ones and uh, I had also had uh, very nicely developed pieces, a good knight on the e5 and a very strong uh, bishop on g7 so this was a good position for me and I went on to win the game in this game my opponent played rook e1 instead and after c5, my opponent didn't play his uh, knight to e2 and this, uh, as in the previous game, he played knight f3 instead. And then followed b5 and bishop f4 for my opponent. And this line is much more critical for black. My opponent immediately uh, puts pressure on the weak d6 pawn, which is the main problem of the whole variation for black. And I did consider to play knight e5 here in this position. But then after knight takes and uh, d takes, bishop g5, bishop e6, knight d5, bishop takes d5, and c takes d5, we again have this pawn, I again would have this uh, pawn majority on the queen side, but this time my knight is worse placed than it was on the e5 in the previous um, uh, variation, and this time my opponent has the protected pass pawn on d5. So this is a, a bad uh, version of the of this uh, line. So instead, I played rook b6, simply protecting my pawn on d6. A4 followed, and positionally uh, suicidal would be to play b4 here. This would leave uh, me with the permanently uh, weakness on d6 and white having a strong control of the d5 square and I would have no counterplay on the on the very static uh, queen side and I think counterplay on the queen side is the whole idea of the Gallagher variation so b4 would be a big m a misunderstanding of uh, of the position b takes c4 and b takes c4 and since my rook has to protect my uh, d6 pawn I cannot really allow uh, a5 in this position because then I would uh, have to put my rook on c6 would which would be awkward, so I felt I had to play a5 in this position. But this is of course leading to another problem, because now the b5 square is awa available to my opponent, and he plays knight b5 uh, right away, which looks very natural. He's occupying a good square and bringing uh, another attacker uh, of my d6 pawn, which is now attacked uh, three times. I play knight e5 to neutralize the attack uh, from the bishop and um, knight takes e5, d takes e5 and now my problem with the weak d6 pawn is eliminated but I have other weaknesses in my position and uh, my opponent is uh, kind enough to um, make me aware of one of them he plays bishop d2 pinpointing um, one of my weaknesses the a5 pawn Rook a6 to defend it, queen c2, rook d8, and now my opponent decides to transfer his knight from b5 to d5, he plays knight c3. And what to do 
and what to plan for me in this passive position with quite a lot of uh, weaknesses. I think I have to go for a plan that consolidates my position in some way. And what I figured out was that a way to do this was to, was to play knight e8. With the plan of playing knight c7, and then knight e6, and then knight d4. And I think if I succeeded in uh, playing, a, uh, putting a knight on d4, that would consolidate consolidate my position and make it uh, more difficult for for uh, my opponent to attack my weaknesses. So um, I was uh, quite uh, satisfied uh, with the uh, position after knight e8. Rook a to b1 followed knight c7, knight d5, and I played rook uh, queen d6, and uh, of course just waiting to play knight e6 and uh, knight d4. But then my opponent came up with a very surprising move. He played rook b5. Very aggressive move, a very uh, interesting move, attacking my a5 pawn and um, almost forcing me to take the exchange uh, by playing knight b5, knight takes b5. But I was not at all happy to take the the exchange at this point because after c takes b5, it's clear that the pawn structure has changed once again. Uh, just a few moves ago I got rid of my weak d6 pawn but now I have three weak pawns on a5 and c5 and e5 and my opponent has this uh, protected uh, pass pawn on uh, b5 so um, this is uh, looking difficult for me uh, uh, I think rook b5 was a very good move for my opponent rook a8 and bishop e3 hitting uh, my c5 pawn I protect it with bishop f8, but this is uh, uh, abandoning the control of the f6 square, and my opponent takes advantage uh, right away, he plays bishop g5. And now, no matter if my rook goes to d7 or to e8, then would follow uh, the knight check on uh, f6, forking my king and uh, the rook. So, my rook is lost in any case. So, what I have to decide here is whether I want to give up my rook for their bishop on uh, g5 or their knight on uh, uh, d5 and I thought that the, the right answer to this question was that it would be better to give it up for for the knight, uh, sorry, the bishop on g5 because then I could perhaps be able to exchange this knight for sorry, this bishop for this knight and then I could go into an uh, opposite colored uh, bishop endgame, which would uh, offer me the best chances of uh, saving this game. So I played bishop e6, and my opponent took the rook. I recaptured queen c3. I exchanged the knight uh, for my bishop. And after queen c7, then the long term pressure on my positional weaknesses finally pays dividends for my opponent because he now wins a pawn after queen takes e5 but after the queen exchange and c4 opening up for my uh, bishop on f8 and also advancing my only asset of the game this uh, pass pawn on uh, c4 um, it's actually quite difficult uh, to see how um, my opponent should uh, be able to progress uh, in this position he played king f1, king f1, sorry, and bishop g6, blockading the d pawn, attacking the rook, and um, on their next move they offered a draw, which uh, I happily accepted. Rook e2 was played, and I accepted the draw offer um, uh, because this had been a, a very difficult game for me. I chose the critical uh, Gallagher variation once again, and uh, my opponent played a, a very critical line for black and uh, I was uh, happy to to get away with the draw from this uh, difficult game. I hope you enjoyed the game and I hope to see you on my blog at klausjensen.com. Bye bye for now.